thumbs on and you are live. Okay, I need one more thing. <laughs> Where's my frying pan? There it is. Okay. And why don't we get... We only have one hob. This would be a lot easier with two hobs, but we're limited. All right, great. I think what I'm going to do is put something so we don't. No, we don't need that. You do have nine people. Okay, great. All right, and now frying pan. Nine people. Okay. <laughs> Someone is hungry. <laughs> We're good? We have sound? Yes. All right. Good. good. I'm going to try to make spaghetti carbonara using my espresso machine to cook it just right. Now, spaghetti carbonara is infamously one of the hardest spaghetti dishes to master. And the reason is there is no cream in it. It is just eggs. If you put cream in it, you're making a different kind of sauce. This is just l basically eggs and cheese, barely cooked so that it looks creamy. If you overcook it, it goes clumpy and it's ruined and you are a failure and your friends will mock you. Now, maybe you will mock me at the end of this video because this could all go horribly wrong. Let's get started and I'll explain to you how we got to this moment in time. So we're first going to take two garlic cloves and we're going to use it to flavor some butter. So I'm just giving it a mash like so, and I'm going to peel it as well. Now those And I'm going to saute those crushed garlic cloves in around 50 grams of butter, but we don't have to be super precise. It's, it's not that kind of dish. So let's see if I can put that there, turn it on, and measure about 50 grams. Okay, that's 36 grams, and I'm gonna do again that much Next, you need some sort of dried pork product. Let's get our spoon here. Now, I'm going to do this at a lower heat because I'm really looking to just have flavored butter. So the next part of this is some sort of flavored pork product. I really like using French dried salami because the pork is really good. It's full of flavor. It's really fatty. You can use speck from Germany or pancetta, but um, in this recipe, we're going to use these dried peppers. I always keep a few of these in my refrigerator at all times. So I have instant flavor I can add to anything. Now, I'm just going to give these a bit of a slice. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up pan frying these in order for them to get a bit crispy. All right. 
Now this is gonna be a little more time consuming than it would be in your kitchen because I only have one hob. So once this is done, I'm gonna put a pot of boiling water here and cook some spaghetti. At home, you should already be cooking your spaghetti while you do this. Now, let me explain a little bit how we got to this point. Years ago, I started playing with sous vide precision cooking and it occurred to me that eggs were just made for sous vide. And that was because the temperature at which eggs coagulate or become creamy was just so precise. The difference between a 62 and a 65 centigrade egg is the difference between runny and overcooked. And I found someone in Italian on YouTube who had a carbonara recipe that used sous vide. And because he's Italian and they're very traditional, in that 15 minute video, he spent about 10 minutes apologizing to his Italian tradition for what he was about to do to carbonara. But he finally did do it, and his recipe was very simple. He took grated cheese and egg, and he blended it together, put it in a bag, and then sous vide it to 64 Celsius, which was just the temperature at which the eggs started to become thick. He then mixed it with pre-cooked spaghetti, and it made absolutely stellar carbonara sauce. The recipe you'll find often out there is to do the same thing, but to cook it at the last minute in a pot. And the problem is, is that when you're adding carbonara sauce to hot spaghetti, you will often overcook it and it will coagulate. In this recipe, we're gonna completely avoid that. So that has bubbled up nicely. The pork bits are nice and crunchy, and you can see that the garlic is caramelized as well. Now the garlic is not gonna end up in the dish. It's gonna be set aside and used for some other kind of food, but not here. So I'm gonna take the garlic out. And I'm gonna turn that off and set it aside. I'm gonna cook some spaghetti while we do the next step. And what I've got is burilla pasta, which I like. I'm cooking half a package, which is what I eat um, with as a two person portion. So that's boiling now. And what I'm doing here is instead of having bought pre um, grated cheese, this is grana padana from Italy. I'm just chopping it up into little bits. When it comes to cooking it, it's gonna end up um, mixing in with the sauce just fine anyway. So here we are. And I'm just going to leave that uncovered until I can get the spaghetti, or rather linguine, under the water. Now hopefully most people watching this have cooked pasta in their life and they're not learning anything from what I'm doing. So that'll take about eight minutes for it to go. Let's go ahead and make the carbonara sauce so it's ready when that is ready to go. All right. So what we're gonna do is get a blender out and we're going to blend three eggs with cheese. So I'm gonna crack three eggs into here. I'm 
I'm going to put 50 grams of water in. Now the water is needed to emulsify the sauce and in the traditional method you add hot pasta water in order to do that. And in this recipe we're just adding water at this stage here and I'm going to add my Italian Parmesan or similar cheese here. So this is, believe it or not, the first time I've done this. Now I've made it many times with a sous vide recipe and I'm hoping this turns out. The main difference between this and sous vide is that in my sous vide recipe I don't add any water because the cooking is very um, sedate. But here, since there is churn, I'm hoping to get a nice emulsion going. I'm not going to talk while this grinds because it's going to blend the eggs and also grind up the cheese. Next we're going to add just the butter that we have cooked the pork with. And I'm going to use a spoon to hold back the pork. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is I don't want to blend the pork bits. And I'm going to blend it once more so the flavored butter, butter is blended into the sauce. Okay, this sauce is now ready to... Okay. This sauce is now ready to cook, but I think I will wait a second. I'm going to mount a thermometer here inside so that I can get the temperature very precisely. Now it's important that I don't go over 65 Celsius. So I put a beep here, but I'm going to watch it. I'm going to put it so that it starts beeping at 60 Celsius. I've put my steam power to be fairly low. I'm going to put it at 0.6 milliliters per second, so I'm uh, cooking a little bit slower, give myself a bit more time. This is going to go fairly quickly. All right, here we go. So there we are, we hit exactly 64 Celsius. Now it's cooling a little bit as it sits. I'm just going to let that sit and turn the thermometer off so it doesn't beep. Now that sauce is going to set a little bit, but in no way did we overcook it, right? We never went above 64 Celsius when the egg would really start to become scrambled eggs and would really be ruined. Now the advantage of this approach is that the traditional way would be to not have cooked this at all but have whipped cheese and egg together with cooked spaghetti and then adding spaghetti water to it to create an emulsion. And that totally does work but 
I've had the problem where it's not cooked enough and it starts to get too watery or I put too much water in or I cook it too much or I turn the pan on and suddenly I have scrambled eggs and spaghetti. The thing about this approach, it is foolproof. There's absolutely no way to overheat the eggs. Now you can hear those pork pieces went thunk, 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 thunk because they are very crunchy. check on the doneness of my pasta, which still needs a good several minutes before it's cooked. three minutes or so.
All right. Our spaghetti, <clears throat> our linguine is now cooked. I'm just gonna take it off and heat here. Put that there. I'm not turning the hob on though. I don't want to cook this at all. And right before I put the sauce in, I'm gonna give it one more quick blend. going to use tongs to put the pasta in, mostly into my frying pan. And it's totally fine, as other recipes will tell you, for it to be quite wet, to have spaghetti water mixed in like so. And you do want to keep your pasta water nearby in case you need to adjust the thickness of your sauce. And now I'm going to Pour this in, you can see it's quite thick. And give that a mix. Okay. Now I've made more sauce than I need here because it turned out I didn't actually have half a package of pasta, I only had a third of a package. So there we are. And what's happening now is the pasta is soaking up some of the water from that. And that is what that looks like. And I will put a bit of pepper on that. And a bit of last minute thumbs on. And that is our beautiful carbonara and see how nice and creamy that is, right? And it's incredibly hard to get this right. But if you look at this, you can see it from the top camera or the side camera. You see how it actually looks like cream? I mean, it looks like yellow cream, even though there is no cream. We've just managed to cook the eggs just perfectly. So we get this incredible lush, viscous, viscous sauce. Now, I also mentioned, if you go to the cop camera, you'll see that the water is going away. And I always put a bit too much liquid in when I serve my pasta. And the reason is that as you sit there and eat it, there's nothing worse than all the sauce vanishing. And that's because the pasta is still soaking up water as it sits in your plate. So I always make my pasta a little bit wet. And you can see here, there's still a little bit of thick water here on the bottom. Okay. And now I'm going to put that on a plate. See Alfred moving toward the studio here to be the designated tester. So come on up, Alfred. You've earned it. Come on. Yay. So Alfred has actually built much of this studio that we're watching. And whenever I'm ducking behind something, it's usually Alfred who's <clears throat> making things work. So here you go. And I mean, check out that sauce. It's just, it looks like cream, even though it's Absolutely egg. Absolutely amazing. All right, so give us a taste. Uh, right yeah, right now, right here on camera. <laughs> Slurping noises and everything. Oh, it's okay. Gosh. I'm going to get myself a bowl. <laughs> wow. It smells amazing. All right. Wow. <laughs> 
Albert's a bit self-conscious here. All right. What do you think? One of the best. One of the best. One of the best I have ever had. Fantastic. Yeah. So there you go. Let's get a top cam review on that. <laughs> Once again, carbonara done on an espresso machine so that you can make it absolutely perfect. No complaints. Give it a try. Let us know how you get on with this recipe idea.